Good gospel day to you and yours. You're locked in to the great inspirational programming on the Rose Highland Sharp Gospel Show. Spirit, Lord, oh yeah, 
Stay tuned for a short message and music for the sick and shut-ins. Amen. All right. On this beautiful day, we thank God for this day. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for another wonderful day that you blessed us with, for being God and King and Lord, Savior, Healer, Provider, Deliverer, everything that we need. God, we thank you in the message today, Lord, that all we need is in Jesus. God, we ask for forgiveness of sin, and we forgive those who have sinned against us. Help us to live right and holy. Help us to treat everybody the way we want to be treated. Help us to walk in love and peace and joy, the spirit of the Lord. Help us to be fully armored with the full arm of God. Help us to walk in charity. Help us to walk in the fruit of the spirit, O Lord, and do thy will. For Christ's sake, amen? Amen. 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 It's done here. Here's a verse of scripture for you. And I'm reading from the King James Version. And then uh, when I expound, it'll be from like the Amplified Version or either the New Revised Standard Version for what you're hearing for today. From the book of Philippians. My brother back there, he, he usually takes notes and he's right on it. And uh, you go back and read it for yourself. Anytime you're in a Sunday school or Bible study or in the Word of the Lord in a, a, a service, pastoral service, Always go back and read it for yourself for your understanding. And I guarantee you the Holy Spirit will give you more and more and more just what you need for your circumstances. Philippians, the fourth chapter, verse 19. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I get chills just <laughs> reading that. Oh my goodness, I love it, I love it. Amen. So my message today, all I need is Jesus. He is more than enough. The Lord is my shepherd. And you all remember having to learn the 23rd Psalm. It's true. Most of us coming along back in the day. If you didn't learn anything else, you learned the, the Lord's Prayer, the sacrament. Amen. And you learned the 23rd Psalm, and you would repeat it. Anything that you learn, when I teach people, you know, I've been an uh, adult-based education instructor and recruiter, all these things for many years. I'm early retired in 2016, now I'm back half-time. I said, I'm back tutoring Lord and teaching, and I give God praise, honor, and glory. And I tell the students that I work with, for, you know, getting their college degree and whatnot. It's memorization. It's rote learning. It's, you have to memorize some things. Other things, and then it'll become a part of you. Well, we're learning the Lord's words, and there's memorization. And some things, you know, I know, listen, I can't quote everything. I've read through the Bible, and yes, oh my goodness. But I can't always quote. I can paraphrase. And I will say, I'm not quoting this, I'm paraphrasing. But I know one thing, that the Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. And he will provide, not only my need, but everybody's need. So here we go, my sister back there. If we look at, amen, um, the book of, amen, Philippians, the fourth chapter, verse one, in the New Revised Standard Version, it says, therefore, my brothers and sisters whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. Now, we know about that royal wedding. Did y'all watch some of that? Some of that. Child, I don't know about you, but I was up early that morning. I wasn't going to come on at 4 a.m. or 3. I was up. I started to get dressed for the occasion, even though I was sitting right there in my living room. I said, I know they were over there in England, but I can't, can't nobody see me. But I started to get dressed, put on my Sunday best. I said, I'm at this royal thing. Now, we're seeing some history here. There's some history. And that was a beautiful thing. But nevertheless, when I look at that young lady's mother, she said, there's no truth. And she, woo! She put on that hat. And they all, I, I, they always had to kind of tip to the side. You know, they went, I said, isn't that pretty? I said, I'm going to get my hat and put on. But the meaning that, 
even though we are not uh, a duke or duchess or prince or princess or king or queen, in Christ Jesus, we are somebody, a royal priesthood, a peculiar generation. We look different. And God, when we're born, we're God's creation. When we receive Christ, we're his children. And we serve King of kings, Lord of lords, Jesus Christ. We serve a mighty good God. So I, amen, cuz. And I, I'm going to put on my little hat like I'm at the royal affair. <laughs> like I met that young lady's mother. I'm, I'm going to sit there and put my little crown on. To God be the glory. But my joy and crown stand firm in the Lord in his way, my beloved. Amen. Okay, if we look at from the New Revised Standard Version, Philippians 4, chapter, verse 2. I urge your dear and I urge uh, Cynthia to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women. Mm. For they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers whose names are in the book of life. God loves everybody. The children, the men, the women. He said help the women. Help those ladies who've been working hard. Sometimes if it was not for the women in the church, Lord, where would the church be? For the men, so they go. What the fellas? Be. You know, we, we're praying they come on back in, you know. But some of the ladies, we got to keep that church going. Now, we may not always be in the, in the pastor, in the seat of the pastor, but we're in there working. We have the usher door. We're getting that choir going. We, we're handling the books for the secretary of work, the clerk of the church, a trustee. Come on, deaconess. Watch out now. Working with the children, the Sunday school. We might not be in that pastor's, but we, hey! Watch out now. And who's sometimes the first next to the, the be in the church? The women. We're going to be right there getting that program going. The afternoon service, the early morning service, the evening service, the midweek service, the fifth Sunday service. Oh, thank God for the women. So the Lord, the apostle said, please help these women. For they have struggled. And I think about going way back. Why that was dead. You know, we have the young women and they they you know how they wear their hats and but some things never change. Don't you know everything that was, you know, it comes back around. The clothes. Now some of y'all remember when we wore that mini skirt back in the 70s, it came back around, didn't it? And then when they had the mini down to your ankle, that thing. then that came back in the sack. I had a cousin up in New York. She so she was a seamstress. My mother's first cousin, a beautiful woman. My God, my God, God bless her so mother and she were like sisters more than cousins. But she worked in the high fashion industry back in those thirties and forties and fifties and sixties and seventies and whatnot. And when she would come down here to Moore County, down to North Carolina. What we had in common, we all sold. And she would make me things. She made my prom dress and my debutante dress, so she helped me with it. And that lady was so incredible. But she said, Rose, she said, my cousin Rose, hold on to some of your things because it's going to come back in 10 or 20 years. You can see it wear the same size. Child, I got a pair of blue jeans, you know, with the embroidery. You, you remember they embroidered back in the 70s? And her daughter gave them to me. And I was, I used to be real little. They called me little brother. I was so little. I'm getting little again, y'all. I've lost those 25 pounds. God is good. You got the work of the Lord, you work with you. Push back with that table, eat some vegetables. <laughs> Cut down on those carbohydrates. And you got the exercise. I'm considered a senior. So I can just go with the senior. I can exercise. Exercise. And then people that 70, 80, and 90, they went over me. I said, I'm not going to let those people be me exercise because I got to get right. Get right in my spirit, Miss Erica, and make sure and make sure I'm right in my body. I want to be healthy to serve the Lord, but nevertheless, I can't fit in this <laughs> and no embroidery. I'm about to, and my goal. I wanted to see if I can get. Well, I can get a wooden leg. I can about get it <laughs> at any time. But in other words, that came back in fashion. But one thing about it, glory, woo, and 
keep it to the side. <laughs> because young yeah, women, this has some art to women. Now, this is one of my daddy's old hats here, you know. And this is one of the ones from way back. This was made lately, and I noticed they come back in fashion. But this is this is the oldest hat. I think older than me. <laughs> but women, we got a our name. We serve the Lord as in the, that book of life, and we got to hold up and teach the younger women. You know, my mother used to say, you know, what's old is new, new is old, and when you go to the book of Ecclesiastes, you know, it's nothing new under the sun. My mother used to say, y'all think y'all got something new? God said, we, we were back in the 30s and 40s. Mama said, we used to do that stuff. I said, come on, Mama, really? <laughs> and she showed us, I said, yeah, you're right. By this time, this is the 70s and whatnot. I said, wow. And Mama said, y'all think you got something on us like, you know, in these relationships when you were teenagers? You think your parents don't know nothing. You think they were never young. Yeah, they were just like I told my son, you know, when he's grown up. And I said, let me tell you something, son. And I tell the young people, I said, I used to be 15 and 14 and 16. Hey, right? Yeah. Yeah, I know so. I, hey, I, know, I know. And you try to fool your parents and you're learning and <laughs> about life. And you go away from home, the college or the military to work, and you learn something about, hey, I, and my mother said, it's the same every generation. Since Adam and Eve, nothing new. But nevertheless, tip that hat to that. Amen. It's the same. Hallelujah. The fourth verse of Philippians, the fourth chapter, verses four, five, and seven in the New Revised Standard Version. Rejoice, I mean, be happy, in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice, be happy in the Lord. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. I think about this. It's hard. It's easy to say to none say, don't worry. Don't be anxious for anything. But all I know when you depend on the Lord, he will help you to not worry. And I'm, we are in this. I'm just honest. I'm a human being. I get concerned, but I've told the younger people, the more I'm in the Lord and reading the word, and make sure I'm fellowshipping with other believers. I'm going to church, giving what doing I need to pray, pray, and pray, and believe in God and operate in faith. I don't worry like I used to. Amen. And then everything I pray, I put everything before the Lord. I don't care how small or insignificant, how silly. God hears all my prayers. And let me tell you, young people and older people, something right now. I have lived long enough to know that it might take a year. 5, 10, 15, uh, 16, 20, 30, and I've had testimony of people 40 years of praying about something. Sometimes when you pray, I've seen it, ha, just like that. God, turn it around. Mm -hmm. Who, mm -hmm. uh, yes sir, who wouldn't serve a God like that? But God says, wait, and what I've learned in getting older, my sisters and brothers, patience. And when we're younger, Amen. when we're a little child, you, I want that ice cream right now. We go into the park. Oh, and then when you're a teenager, I can't go to the party. How come I can't go to the party? So everybody else is going to the party. And mom and dad said, no, they're nothing. You're not going. <laughs> oh, but everybody else is doing. I'm going I'm, I'm a, I'm to a look so I won't be there. And I learned there are enough other little parties to go to their gatherings. And sometimes it was not meant for you to be there because something was getting ready to happen. It was not for your good, and your parents could see, or your grandparents, that it's not really for your good. Are certain people you're around are dating and in relationship? Your parents can see it when you can't see it. You don't understand it. This is what I tell the young ones. I said, so we have this wisdom. So I say this. Your first 25 years, and this is a young lady. I know she's very young here. Amen. <laughs> You want to, well, you're the youngest one in this room, my brother. How to God be the glory. And then you have your second 25 years. Y'all hear me now. Or your first 30 years and your next 30. 
and then you moving into another era. And I've lived long enough, you know, I'm not real, but I've lived long enough to say, I learned some things. That first part half, and then I'm in the second half, and, and if God spares my life, if I, if I live to see 70 or 80 or 90, 100, you know, but whatever. You learn, I said, no, what, what did I learn in that first, I'm out of that first 25. And you're going into the next 25. I learned some things. And listen, y'all know what's that club, you know, when you get 50, and they, you know, the red hat ladies. Child, when I was, I won't even on the 50, yet. Them, those ladies, Rose, don't you want to join? I want to keep talking about want to join the red, and then that AARP, what the AARP card? I said, those people would worry me. I said, every time I open my box, mailbox, and I want that, I said, I'm not there yet. I ain't there yet. And somebody was talking about the Medicare, and I said, I said, ma'am, I ain't there. I got a few more. I ain't there yet. Stop trying to urge her. But nevertheless, ain't it good to get old? Hey, we still here on this side of the Is it good to learn something? Hey, my dear, how you doing? So I tell you this. Well, 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 ha, and a ha. But I thank God I can wear this red hat because I'm still here <laughs> by the grace of God. You've seen the first 25, the next 25, and so on and past that. I thank God for the journey. I'm going to tell y'all about the fifth week. The fifth, let's see. We're still in the fourth chapter of Philippians, the New Revised Standard Version. Amen. Verse 8 and 9. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. If it's good, if it's of the Lord, then well, that's what we want to keep our mind on, think on those things. So keep on doing the things that you have learned and said and received and heard, seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. Think on those things that are true. God's word is true. If you don't remember all of this, if it has any worthiness of praise, then that's the stuff we need to think on. And God will keep you in his perfect peace. And I thank God that he cleansed my soul I accepted Jesus as an early age and began to take life. And don't you just love it? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Why did this look? She loves it. And this young lady right here, when I got married years ago, mm, it's been a minute, the late 1987, I think about that a moment. This sweet sister right here, my cousin's beautiful <coughs> wife. She, you made the hats, didn't you? She made all the for the bridal party. And I kept, I think my nieces had one, but I, I think I got two at the house. I was going through everything. Honey, this little lady, she was working. My mother had everybody in North County working on this wedding, you know, to, to give their time. And this is one that she helped mama with making the hat. So I know she's a hat lady. And she's a woman of God. Hallelujah. But don't you just love that? Let me tell you a real quick story about this hat. When I retired early for the community college around the corner there, that uh, <laughs> the vice president lady, which used to be called the dean, and the rest of the staff, they had a whole bunch of hats on the table, and they had a cake. Like, congratulations, Rose, happy retirement. Well, I thought that was just part of the decoration. They said, no, you're going to take those hats home because we know you love hats. <laughs> and there are more than these. And I said, Lord, I got more hats. So I did keep some of my mama's hats. And the lady sitting right there from Eastwood, North Carolina, this is a hat lady. Honey, when she would come to church, she'd have all her fancy. We call her the fancy hat lady. Miss Connie. That's right. That lady that had it on over there at her church. Hallelujah. There was a time when we were told we were supposed to wear a hat to church. And my dad said, you come here, you know, wear your hat, wear your hat, wear your hat. But to God be the glory. As I'm coming to an ending on this beautiful story, hallelujah, that when you go back and read in all of Philippians, don't just take, you know, yes, God will supply you every need, but go back and read 
in Philippians, the fourth chapter, verses like verse 12. I know what it is to have little, and I know what it is to have plenty. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being well-fed uh -huh, and going hungry, of having plenty and being in need. And verse 13, I can do what? All things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. The King James Version reads as that. Because sometimes we just take that one verse, I, and we can, but we are human. God, with God, all things are possible. So it's saying, have you ever been hungry? I mean, shown up hungry. Your covers were a little bit bad for whatever reason. Have you ever been well fed? You know, you got a lot of food. Are you going to a, a, a banquet? And you know, all you can eat is just plenty for everybody. And you've had so much food like my parents used to have in their garden. And back in the day, in my uh, great aunt, and they would slaughter the hog and they would have can all the vegetables and whatnot. They have more than enough to give to the neighbors. You remember that? You share with your neighbors. It didn't matter whoever you name, you just share. It was a gracious plenty. And I understand during the uh, depression years, in the late 20s and early 30s, my great aunt said she never lacked. She had enough to give to the people. She was in Taylor Town, and she'd give to the people in Eastwood and the people she was helping. And this, she never had children of her own, but she was always helping somebody else. And to God be the glory. So whether we have a little, or we got a lot, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. That's why we know that all we need is in Jesus. God will take a little bit and make much. You understand? He, I don't know how he does it, but he, good morning, how are you? He can take a little, amen, and make a lot, amen. And as we're ending out this beautiful story, there's, there's so much wonderfulness to it. Don't look at what you have. You know when that bank account is low? The gas tank is low. I've seen God do some miracles. You, you depend on the Lord. And I don't know how he does it. He will make a way. And when you need a, a check to come in the mail or somebody to come by, come by here, Lord, come by here. And sometimes God is moving us as we go on through life and, and we prosper and we're working and we're able. God will put on our heart to, to give to somebody, even if it's somebody that did something wrong to you. Watch out now. That God said, go and say what? And the Beatrice, bless your enemies. Don't curse them. And when they, if they ask for that one little thing, give them your whole coat. Give, give them all. Give it to them. You'll be blessed. And let God fight your battles. And he said, vengeance is mine. I will repay. Let him work it out. But we're able to give, then give it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God is always providing. There are several verses we could hold on to uh, that support this lesson today. Uh, Matthew, the 6th chapter, verse 25 and part 8. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Don't worry about it. Matthew, the 6th chapter, verses 32 and 33, and this is from the King James Version. Amen. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But what? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. If you seek God first, I guarantee you, I know it for myself, live through it, God will provide. Mm -hmm. Psalm 30. Seven, might stop right there, verse 4. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. That doesn't mean God going to give you everything you want. He's going to give you what you need. Sometimes, ooh, I desire that man be my husband. <laughs> oh, I delight. I desire he shall be my husband. Oh. Now, let me tell you, that man is somebody else's husband. And I'm going to say, or the man said, what's the one to do? What a girl look good, look at that show. No, that's somebody else's wife. <laughs> to God be the Lord. I want a Cadillac. I want a Mercedes. Hey, you got a car. I got my. Look here. Be satisfied. God will put.
put in you the desires that you need to have when you seek God. Honestly, God, He will. Now He, he knows we, but He knows we have our eyes. Sometimes our eyes get a little. <laughs> but it wasn't meant for you to be with that person. God helped you to dodge that bullet. Because it was going to be calamities. Whole bunch of mess and dramatics and drama. Say so. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Glory to God. <laughs> I preached to my own self on that. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm 34, 9 and 10 says, Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. When we fear God, that means respect the Lord. He's going to supply our need. Respect God. Love him. Put him up there. He will work it out. He will supply your every need. And as I come to the very close, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now I want y'all to help me out because I'm going to just read these verses as we close the 23rd Psalm, the Amplified Bible. And I need for y'all to just say, when I point you, say, the Lord is my shepherd. Say it right now. The Lord is my shepherd. I, ha, ha, I shall not want. He lets me lie down in green pastures. That means God gives us rest. He's what? The Lord is my shepherd. He leads me beside the still and quiet waters. He refreshes and restores my soul. That means life. He leads me in the paths of righteousness. That means right standing with him for his name's sake. He's what? The Lord is my shepherd. Even though I walk through the sunless valley, that shadow of death, I fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod to protect and your staff to guide, they comfort and console me. The, he's what? The Lord is my shepherd. Amen. You prepare a table, there it is, before me in the presence of my enemies. God prepares you to withstand the trials, the battles, the upheavals, whatever you got to go through, God will supply. Don't you worry about what they said, who said they, they said, who they? Well, if they said something, don't you worry about them. You, <laughs> you have anointed and refreshed my head with all my cup overflows. And he's what? Lord is Surely goodness and mercy yeah. what we don't deserve and unfailing love everlasting love shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will what? That means all of my days, thank you Lord, in the house and in the presence of God Hallelujah. I thank God for this one. That all I need is Jesus. He's more than enough. And the Lord is my shepherd. Y'all enjoy the word this morning. And then let's give God a hand. Okay, we just clap for the Lord. He is. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. He will work it out. Amen. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the word today. For those who were here to listen, those who couldn't make it, the staff the employees, the nursing staff, uh, everybody in their place and space, those who were in the uh, activities department, the young lady who's here today, those who joined us, the family members, all the residents here, God. Have your way, God, for your glory. We believe for the saving of every lost soul. We believe for deliverance, oh God, for those things from within and without. We believe for healing in our body, in our emotions, and we believe, God, that you're going to provide every need, not only for the widow and need and the orphan, for the imprisoned, those in our military and those, God, who are leaders and those, God, who are on the street, everybody, but God, right here, right now, that our needs are met according to your riches and glory. For, and glory, for glory, for Christ's sake. Amen? Amen. 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 Give God a hand. Work on. That keeps me honest. Keeps me honest. All right. Okay. I'm going to go a little old school. So Vacation Bible School, we learned these songs, just a couple of these, and uh, for the old and young alike. Uh -huh. Come by, my Lord, come by, come by, my Lord, come by, come by. Somebody's calling, Lord, come by, yes, Lord. Somebody's calling, Lord, come by, Somebody's calling, Lord, come by, oh, Lord, come by. Somebody's praying, somebody's praying. 
Trust. 
Hallelujah. This is one of the younger people love. And them the old little praise music. <laughs> How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. And all can see. That different gospel groups who have taken part of the words of the song and fixed it, you know. But I said, Lord, I, I, I hear Jesus in this thing. You know, it was an R&B song, but I'm hearing Jesus. <laughs> that said, I'm going to try this little bit at the clap. Hear me, Lord. <laughs> when the night day has come, oh, <laughs> and the land is dark, hey, and the moon is the only light I see. Hey now, no, I won't be afraid. No, I won't be afraid. Hey, just as Watch out, here's a new twist. So, 
show. Remember when you feel like you have nothing else left, you have the Lord and he's all that you need and he will supply your every need. Take care and God bless. And I hope and pray that you will make the Lord Jesus Christ the head of your life, that God will be the bishop of your soul, the center of your joy. In Christ Jesus name, amen and amen. I'm in time. 